Hey, welcome to edX world and another topic in the IGCSE accounting series. This video is on accounting policies and the objectives that have to be kept in mind when deciding on the accounting policies for the business. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon. Many more videos will be uploaded in future and I'm sure you'll get to learn a lot that will help you in your upcoming examinations. If you are interested in buying a full fledged course that will help you practice questions including the MCQs and also study theory notes, you can consider buying our IGCSE practice course on accounting, which is just for $99. So in this video, we are going to study about what are accounting policies, what choices do businesses have when deciding on the accounting policies, examples of areas where choices are available for accounting policies. And then finally, what are the objectives to be kept in mind when deciding on the accounting policies? So if you have a choice of A and B, how would the business decide which policy is best for the presentation of your financial statement? So you'll have to keep these objectives in mind and the policy that helps you achieve these objectives is the right policy for your business. Understanding first what are accounting policies. Accounting policies are specific principles, rules, guidelines, conventions or practices that have to be applied by an entity when preparing and presenting its financial statements. Some areas where entities or businesses have a choice between accounting policies, I've listed down some here. So a business can choose among the available methods of depreciation, straight line method is there, written down value method is there, revaluation the method is there. For different assets, it can choose different depreciation methods. So how will it make this choice? Again, keeping in mind those objectives, which we will see in the next slide. When calculating the cost of the inventory, there are certain cost flow assumptions you can make. You can make a FIFO assumption, weighted average cost assumption or a LIFO assumption. Now you may not have studied this in IGCSE, but in grade 12, 13 and AS and A level, you would study what are, what are these terms. So here also the entity can make a choice among the available options and decide accordingly. Inventory records again can be kept either on perpetual basis or a periodic basis. Entity has to choose what is best suited for it. Now, revenue recognition policies could be different for different businesses based on their business model. So there could be a cutoff date that would be considered in recording the revenues. Any revenues earned within this date will be considered in the current year and any revenues or any sales made beyond this time, beyond this date would go to the next year. Now, that's a revenue recognition policy. The business will have to decide on this policy based on its business model and keeping the objectives in mind. Now, let's have a look at the accounting objectives that have to be kept in mind. First one is relevance. Now, information or financial statements are relevant when it can influence the economic decision of the users. Meaning, when can you say that something is relevant for the user of the financial statements when it can impact their decision, when it can change their decision. So the policies that have to be chosen or the way the financial statements are prepared have to be relevant. It should be important for the users of the financial statements. And also there is another aspect to relevance, which is the information should be available on a timely basis. Delayed availability of information will not be relevant for the user of the financial statements and the user will not be able to make any decision, any concrete decision based on the information provided by the financial statements. Our next objective is reliability. So information available in the financial statements have to be reliable for the users of the financial statements. The user has to be confident in relying on the information available. This will be possible if the following conditions are met. The information must be a faithful representation of the state of affairs of the business. So whatever is happening in the business that should be correctly presented by the financial statements. The, there should not be any scope for window dressing in the financial statements. Then only it can be considered as reliable. Information has to be complete and no material information should be missing from the financial statements. You cannot omit important information and say that whatever information is there in the financial statement is complete. No, that's not true. If something is omitted, if some information is missing, the financial statements are not reliable. The financial statements have to be free from obviously material errors. Any error that is materialistic, that is material from the user's point, should not be present in the financial statements else it could have an effect on the decisions of the users and also bias should not be there. The financial statements when they are prepared by accountants, the element of bias should not be there. The accountants should not be biased in overstating profits, understating profits or, or overstating cost, understating cost, etc. And wherever there are uncertainties, uh, let's say there is a doubt whether something will happen, something will not happen. Prudence should be applied and 
losses could be overstated or expenses could be overstated but in no case profits or assets should be overstated so one should follow a very prudent approach in preparing the financial statements then we have comparability financial statements should be prepared in a way that allows the users to conduct inter firm comparison and intra firm comparison inter firm comparison means comparison between two firms of in the same industry now that is possible if the firms follow the industry guidelines if they follow the set industry policies the policies that are relevant for that industry if they follow irrelevant policies if they choose the incorrect accounting policies inter firm comparison may not be possible intra firm comparison means comparison of financial statements of two firms for different periods that will be possible if there is consistency in the accounting policies being followed so it is very important that financial statements ensure comparability to the users and the final objective that has to be met is the understandability understandability expects that the financial statement should be easily understandable by people by the users of the financial statements now these users are obviously expected to have decent knowledge of finance and accounting and business so that they can read the financial statements given this that the users have that knowledge the financial statement should not be prepared in a way that makes it difficult for the users to interpret the data extract the useful information and affect their decision in an incorrect way or in a negative way so i hope these objectives were clear obviously these objectives you cannot expect big questions but every year if you notice there is at least one mcq or you could find one definition on these objectives so you should expect at least one question on these objectives make sure you know them so that you don't even lose one mark from this topic if you enjoyed the video please like it please share it with your friends subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next video soon thank you